Not Homeless Enough is brought to you through a partnership of the Doubled Up Work Group and the Madison Public Library. The Doubled Up Work Group is a subgroup of the Homeless Services Consortium of Dane County with a focus on bringing voice, awareness, and education about challenges faced by doubled up and self-paying hotel populations in our community. Tonight, I am honored to be able to welcome Senator Agard to open up the event for us. Senator Agard has been a longtime advocate on issues of housing and homelessness at both the local and state level. Her leadership and commitment to promote resources for unhoused and underhoused populations is unfailing. Anyone working in this field knows her name very well, and we are all so grateful to have her represent our community at the state level. So without further delay, I will turn this program over to Senator Agard for opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bridget. It is a real honor to be able to be with you all tonight. Um, I just very much look forward to when we can have these events in person. Um, we really value the opportunity to gather as a community and learn more about the experiences of people who are our friends and neighbors and family members. And while this is such a lovely opportunity and I wanna applaud the work of the Homeless Services Consortium and the Doubled Up Work Group, as well as the Madison Public Library and their staff for helping make this be possible. I also know that we are all looking forward to the opportunity when we can do this safely again in person. One of the reasons we are meeting virtually is because we care about one another. Compassion is something that we define ourselves by and we need to remember that we don't know the stories of everyone in our community, that there are people struggling every single day that we cross paths with. And we have the opportunity to learn more about one another and see one another when we actually slow down and we hear each other's stories. And bringing together um, the storytelling, videography and hard work um, that we are gonna uh, be able to take part in tonight is so very important in lifting these stories up. Uh, we need to remember that these are our friends and neighbors. The, these are real people in our communities. One thing that I have heard over the years in my work as a policymaker is that these numbers are not real, that we really don't have unhoused and homeless people in our communities and that there is an overrepresentation that people are not being honest uh, about their stories so that they can have access to benefits and services. And just last week, my Republican colleagues in the legislature introduced more harmful bills as opposed to bills that would see our friends and neighbors as who they are and lift one another up. And it is because of the hard work of people like Bridget and so many other folks on the Homeless Services um, Commission, as well as folks who are brave enough to be able to share their lived experience that enlighten me and give me strength every day to do the work in the Capitol building for the people of our community. And it's with that compassion and that determination and because of the folks who are on the ground doing this hard work that I have the ability to continue to do my work in the community, um, in the Capitol building, ensuring that we are lifting people up and protecting them as best as we can. I believe we will get there and I know that we have a lot of work to do and we're gonna hear some of those stories tonight. So thank you so much to everyone for joining us. Um, and I look forward to the continuation of conversations after tonight's hour together. I do have an extreme honor and privilege of introducing um, Giovanna Fleming. She is a young mother of two children who has lived experience with doubled up homelessness. And she has a firsthand understanding of the barriers and gaps in our community for the doubled up population. And she's here bravely standing up to share part of her journey. She is currently a junior at the UW-Madison She's majoring in social work, and she has made a commitment to advocating for changes in the system by sharing her story and investing in herself to make our community be a better place. She is a hero to many and very brave. Giovanna, thank you for being here. Thank you, Senator Edgar, and thank everyone. Um, thank you for providing me with the opportunity to share with you today. 
My name is Shavana, and I am a single mother of two beautiful children. When most people think of the term homeless, they think it is a pretty clear and standard categorization for people who have nowhere to officially live. I've always had a roof over my head, but that roof was not always my own. At many points in my life, I have been doubled up, couch surfing from place to place, just trying to make sure that I have somewhere to stay. And while that roof was not my roof, I did not qualify as homeless. When I aged out of foster care, I had a place for about a year, thanks to programs for kids um, in my position. And um, when that program was up, um, I didn't have anywhere to stay. Um, I soon then had my first child and I was able to secure an apartment again, but I struggled with the cost of rent and I found myself um, not being able to renew my lease. Now it was not just me, it was two of us doubling up in couch surfing and the stakes were even higher. Um, being homeless does not mean that the system consider you homeless, but we were not considered homeless enough to qualify for financial support or support of a program to assist us. Being a single parent with no extended family support is challenging enough on its own. And now I had the added stress of not knowing where I would sleep at night. Where would I take my baby or whether or not I would find a place for a few nights that was suitable. My cycle of housing instability repeated like this for many years. I witnessed the challenge of double up members of our community on a first hand base within my family throughout the years. I've had siblings who are double up couch surfing in the community. This is the problem that we are facing. Uh, so many low income families in our community. What do I tell my siblings who have no place to go? Do I let them double up with me for a short period of time? Um, even though I know that will put my housing at risk. Um, this is the constant push and pull of that system on families like mine. When you own a home, you have the freedom to let your family members or friends stay with you if they need to for a short time. But when you rent, you don't have that option. You have to choose to risk your own housing to help them or turn your back on the people who might have helped you when you were homeless to ensure that your housing is not at risk. When you look at the economic disparities in our Dane County community, it becomes important that we introduce equity into the talk about homelessness. Black and brown families like mine are overrepresented in homelessness, but we are also underrepresented in home ownership rates. We as a community have to do better to support all of our unhoused families. I have persevered through these multiple experiences of being homelessness. And while this has been extremely traumatizing, I have gained insight from them and I am proud to be in a more stable position today. I committed myself to pursuing higher education. I went back to school. I earned my associates from Madison College. And now I'm a student at UW-Madison working towards my bachelor's in social work. I am grateful for this unique viewpoint that my experience being double up has granted me. I am committed to using that experience to help empower others, to speak to the reality of the needs and challenges faced by that population and push the system towards a more equitable approach to supporting all homeless members of our community. Thank you everyone for listening. Devana, thank you so much for your voice. And I can't find a better way to introduce what we're doing tonight than to say she, she understands it, she gets it, and we're gonna hear a little bit more about that. Thank you, thank you so very much. I uh, also get the really nice, um, the privilege to introduce Diane Nyland, who is going to share with us some really extremely important voices from all of Dane County in Madison here. So, uh, Diane is the founder and president of Hear Us. She has spent the last oh, 16 years traveling across the United States, gathering voices, listening to stories, um, advocating, educating, providing testimony, um, and doing whatever she can to help our communities across the United States understand the struggle of, of our 
neighbors and our friends and our community who are experiencing homelessness. She brings to us a unique perspective because of all the travels that she's been doing. And she just recently wrote a book called Dismays and Driven, her look at uh, family homelessness in America. We'll speak about that a little bit later. But um, I really want to say welcome, Diane because she's going to share with you a video that she uh, produced in our own community this summer. We found some more brave families, some more brave voices to share their stories. And she's gonna talk a little bit about that process with us and a little bit about her experience with those videos and mostly uh, a lot that she's learned about homelessness and our community and just moving ahead. Thanks. Welcome, Diane. Oh, thanks, Janie. I, I'm just so delighted to be here. And, and Giovanna, I, next time I come to town, I would certainly uh, be honored to, to meet you and, and sit down and have a chat. So um, I hope we, can, hope we can do that and uh, do it soon. Um, thank, you know, I, I'm just delighted to have such a great uh, group interested in this issue. Um, the summer when I suggested that you know I could maybe come up and, and do this film. It was just kind of a long shot. And um, I, I'm a one woman nonprofit and I had a little extra time, um, a little window of time and I don't like to be bored. So uh, when I contacted Janie and asked her if that would be something that she's interested in, she about jumped through the screen or phone or whatever it was. Um, but let me just briefly say, I used to run a shelter in Illinois, in both in Joliet and then in Aurora, and I've had 13 years of shelter experience. I worked uh, basically uh, with other people to get the Homeless uh, Children Education Act passed in Illinois, and then got it passed on the federal level. So the McKinney-Vento Act, for those of you that are familiar with school stuff, um, my hands were dirty on that one too. So. Um, in, in the process, I worked with school districts in the Chicagoland area for a couple of years and realized in doing trainings with the schools that the people did not understand uh, and didn't recognize families um, that were in homeless situations. Uh, the stories are in my, uh, my book. I actually have another book too. If you go to my website, you'll see that. So I won't go into the details on that, but if you're curious, uh, I promise you it's an interesting read. Um, but I basically in 2005 um, decided to go on the road. Um, I got a van uh, to live in and I've been in it ever since. And I actually wore out one and I'm on my second one now. Um, I got a video camera and I started traveling around the country to interview kids and parents who were in homeless situations and let them tell the story. That's the name, Hear Us. Um, and so you can see any of my, uh, my videos on my website. So hopefully um, you'll take a look at that. This summer, I, I just absolutely was blown away with the stories that I got. And I, and I just want to um, honor the courageous families that were able to share their stories with me. Um, they, they were not scripted at all. They didn't practice. They didn't do anything except just share their stories. And then I edited it to get it down to um, short enough to, to fit in this 10 minute film. So um, I'm going to flip over now and uh, share my screen hopefully. And we're gonna see a 10 minute film. And then afterwards uh, we'll have some time for discussion. So. I could say a lot about these families and their situations. And, and I think what I'll tell you, um, just to kind of wrap this up, is the doubled up situation is something that no community is doing well. It's, it's the not homeless enough um, blues that they, you know, there's so many families. I've interviewed families all across the country. And there's so many families in this situation that you just, uh, it's so frustrating that, that Congress um, can't change HUD's definition of homelessness, which would certainly be a, a big thing um, to, to get this started. Um, but the families in, in this situation, they languish in, in these bouncing around doubled up 
kind of things. They don't know where they're staying and, and it really takes a toll on the family. And they end up becoming homeless enough in a way that's traumatic. And, and you know, they, they, it does much more harm for them uh, than it would if we could just at least stop their flow into homelessness and help them. So um, I, I want to just thank the Doubled Up Committee, especially for, for your work on this, because Dane County, uh, Madison, you could be the, um, you know, the first community in the uh, country to really start uh, to do something significant. I know you've got a, a program started. Um, I remember that from my uh, past few visits there. And, and it's you, it, much more needs to be done. Um, and, and I just say that it should be done with a sense of urgency as if it was your own family in these doubled up situations. Because, the, you know, the excuses that you get from members of Congress and, and other people that say, oh, we can't do that, we can't do that. I'm sorry, we can do that. And, and I think um, now with the, uh, all of the resources that have come down from our wonderful experience with COVID, I think there, this is a good time to, um, to shift things and, um, and really look at this doubled up situation in a way that, um, that will be helpful for the families. And I promise, to you that if you get something going and if I can be of any assistance at all, um, just you know how to get a hold of me and I'll be happy to do what I can do to help. So that's um, that's basically what I'll, I'll leave it at now. And uh, I think we have some discussions um, to get started. Thank you, Diane. Um, I just wanna say first, like thank you for the care that you show when you're talking with families and talking about their the experience of doubled up families. Um, we did have a few questions ahead of time. Um, if anyone has any now, you can put them in the chat and we may be able to get to them. You spoke to the first one a little bit already, um, but how do you see any similarities or differences in doubled up homelessness in Madison and Dane County versus other places you've been? Does it seem similar everywhere? Did anything stand out for you here? You know, the only thing that stood out to me was that you cared about doing something about it and, and have started uh, at least a program to do something. Um, you know, again, it's minute compared to the, the number of people that you would find if you could really uh, uncover the number of people in doubled up situations. Um, I will say that from the community, I just came from Raleigh and, and there's a you know pretty enlightened group of people in Raleigh, but they don't have uh, real traction going on this. And, and what they're doing is providing some, uh, a tremendous amount of support ser services for the families in the motels uh, and doing whatever they can by hook or by crook. And I don't wanna say by crook negatively, but um, they, they are trying to get families uh, out of motels and into housing. But, you know, the, the situation is really hard. And even when they get a, you know, section eight certificate, housing certificate, um, you know, the things like the, um, the application fees that, uh, you know, and, and the double, the, um, you know, bad credit and all those kind of things, th those are barriers. And I think, you know, any of you that work on this issue could identify the barriers. And I think it's going to be a matter of just really looking at how can you creatively get around those barriers. And, um, you know, that's, that's something, again, I, I guess I was kind of selfish when I wanted to do this film because I knew in, um, you know, the people I knew in Madison and Dane County, um, it, it's like, if you can, if you can do something, then, you know, if anybody could do something, you can do it. So I, I think, um, you know, it, it puts a lot of pressure on you, but I'll be um, honest to say that nothing else is really, from what I've seen and read and heard, and I haven't seen anything. Thanks, Diane. Um, I know that, you know, you spoke to more families than, than were in the video, and understandably some people don't feel comfortable um, being in a video. Uh, were, were there any other, other than what came up in the video, any other barriers that you were hearing from people about just housing in general? Um, 
or think themes that were coming up over and over again. You mentioned just the cost of housing um, and not being eligible for programs, but were there any other themes themes that you heard? Well, the um, the the application fee is is one that really comes up um, frequently, no matter where I am. And you know, when you can uh, have to pay to just be considered for um, you know a tenant, and yeah, I think it's a well, one of the families in Raleigh said it's it's a money maker for the property owners. Um, they get, you know, fifty or hundred dollars for you applying to, and then they say, no, I'm sorry, we don't have anything, and they pocket the money. So I think, you know, that it's financially, it, it's really a problem there as well as the, you know, the credit um, being a big issue, and uh, with evictions on people's records now, um, I think. You know, those those are all common things, but those they come up time after time. Thank you, Diane. Um, I'm going to ask, we, we have a question that I'm going to pose to another member of the Doubled Up Work Group that you've already heard from, Janie, who int introduced Diane. Um, just in terms of the scope of the Doubled Up Homelessness issue in our schools, um, would you mind speaking to that right now, Jenny? Yeah, I think one of the biggest challenges that we have um, around the issue of doubled up and self-paying populations is data. So uh, it's difficult to figure out how many households are experiencing doubled up homelessness and self-paying because we don't really have a system to collect that data. School districts, because we implement the McKinney Vental Homeless Assistance Act in our schools, which is a program that gives direct support to remove barriers for educational purposes uh, to students experiencing homelessness and their families, has to collect all kinds of data for um, our uh, the DPI for the Department of Education. And one of the things they ask us to do is that when we identify students that we ask them what their housing, what their homeless situation, their housing situation is. And so we look and we collect data on our families who are doubled up in shelter on the street. Um, and that's where we have the most data in our community and that's every school district does that across the United States not just Madison every school district so Dane County has a collection of data about how many school-aged children and families are experiencing this and that's the only place that we really have a legitimate number coming from about how many homeless are so here's an example um, in the year 2018-19 uh, that school year and I go back that far because that's the last year that we had some really accurate data before COVID hit us, all right? So in the year 1819, in Madison schools, we looked at our population through what we call household uh, units. So that would be a, an adult and the minor children in the household. We identified 511 households that were experiencing doubled up and self-paying in hotels that year. There are 129 households that were in shelter or uh, what we would consider on the street or living in their cars at the point of identification. 511, 129. Well, one of the challenges that we have in our community is uh, we have different definitions of homelessness and um, well, different interpretations of who gets prioritized for support. So, the 511 households, now that easily could be in Madison, a thousand children, all right? So households versus children, two different things. Um, don't always have direct access to all the housing programs that we have in our community because you have to meet the literal homeless definition under HUD in order to access those housing programs. So that is one of the barriers that we are facing in our community is how do we have our families who access, need access to those housing programs, access it when our own community uh, has different priorities for making sure that different populations can access those housing programs. When you look at it from a county standpoint, it even becomes a little bit more challenging because we don't have shelters out in Cambridge. We don't have shelters uh, for our homeless populations in um, 
uh, Sun Prairie or uh, out, out in Mount Horeb. So the farther out you go in in our county, the fewer numbers of uh, populations are being served in shelters and the more numbers of these populations are being served under doubled up or uh, self-paying in hotels if they can afford it. And then uh, the only last thing I will add about data in our system is there is nobody really collecting data on households who don't have school-aged children. So what we know historically, even in our shelters, is that we have more younger families who don't have school-aged children in our shelters than we do families who have school-aged children, although that varies from year to year. But we, what we also know is that if you're doubled up and you're a family with non-school-aged children, your data is not being collected anywhere. No one is asking or no one has a system to count how many families without school-aged children we have who are homeless in the doubled up or self-paying realm. So that's a real challenge. And our youth who um, are really big couch surfers, very difficult to identify and to, uh, to capture those numbers. And then we just have singles in our community who are experiencing doubled up and um, self-paying in hotels. That number is not, it's just, it's data that is not captured, but as people who work in schools, we know that this is a huge piece. We know that there's a lot going on um, around data. Thank you, Jenny. Um, there are some questions coming up in chat that I'm gonna do my best to answer a little bit myself and maybe have other people jump in. Um, but just to kind of, <laughs> just just to um, explain again, I think the, the part of us, some of us that are here that are members of the Doubled Up Work Group, it's a small group that is part of the Homeless Services Consortium, which is a larger organization in Dane County working on homelessness. And our smaller group is really focused on how can we look at issues um, specific to this population. And so a lot of this is really new and I know there are a lot of questions and what could ne next steps be. And we're hopeful that this is kind of the beginning of working on some of that. Um, one of the questions is whether the reluctance to apply for Section 8 is because it's an endless waiting list. Um, as a community social worker in Madison, I, I feel like a lot of people aren't necessarily reluctant to apply. They want to, but it does feel a little bit hopeless when the wait list may be six months or three years and when a person needs housing and they need safe housing they need it now so often what we're doing is making plans for immediate safe housing and a longer term plan for affordable housing that even if it's not an option now may be an option down the line when a family is still likely to need it um, and yeah emily i can um, right. there was a comment about and, and i think it's a very important one especially for the the madison area about the motels and hotels um you know that's a very vulnerable situation expensive and then when you have events which you have quite a bit there the families are forced to move out of their their units or pay just um, an incredible amount of money to stay. Um, and, and so I think that, you know, when people say, oh, they're in motels, they're fine. That, that is such a fallacy that, uh, that really needs to be um, shot down every time somebody brings that up because it's, you know, it, it is a very horrible situation. First of all, in motels, it's, you know, it's not a vacation. And then when there's special events, that's, um, that, that really kicks you out um, real quickly. Um, there's a question for you, Diane, about describing the federal bill to align definitions of homelessness. I know Janie talked about that a little bit, but 
Okay, and I, I just uh, the other day had time to put something on my website on the front page of my uh, Hear Us website that actually will explain it. So if you are interested in something other than a quick little elevator talk, um, you can take a look at it. Um, basically, um, the de Department of Education has a definition that includes a doubled upper in motels that are self-pay. HUD doesn't, and we've for years introduced bipartisan legislation to fix this, and it has not passed yet, but every year I keep thinking that it's going to uh, it's going to pass. It, it would be a huge thing if it did. Um, and what it will take is people like you rattling the cage of your uh, Congress people to do that. And and you know there's so much going on in Congress now that you just kind of hate to bother them. But really, this is something that could sneak in under the radar screen and it, it could get passed. Um, actually, my congressman is on the committee that oversees HUD and he's very supportive of this. So it's something that, um, you know, I think we're getting closer to getting it passed. So I would urge you to take a look on my homepage at hearus.us and I know the link's up on the comments and uh, there's a, a, a link that will explain all that and give you a chance to contact your member of Congress. Um, really, it's something, there's like 80% of the families that are in homeless situations in this country are not counted as homeless. You want to think of like the numbers, it's just, it's it's mind boggling. And, and the families suffer needlessly because of it. So I'm hoping that we can get this legislation passed and start moving in the right direction. Thank you, Diane. Um, there are a lot of very technical questions about definitions of homelessness and how we get our data and how we know, for example, there's a question about whether or not we can track how many families are evicted because they've been doubling up. Um, and I think the general theme is there's so much we don't know. And that's why we're here. And the fact that you all are here and listening and interested is amazing. And now it's kind of our job as a group to um, think about what our next steps are. And it's a big task. Um, but I would like to kind of direct that next question to Nicole Sandler of United Way, just to speak a little bit about what some next steps could be in this work and the role that the United Way might play. Thanks, Emily. Um, I'm Nicole Sandler. As Emily said, I'm a member of this Doubled Up Work Group. It's a privilege to work with these, um, these other members and I can't tell you how thrilled we are that so many of you are interested enough and you registered and you're here listening. Um, as Emily said, I'm also a staff member at United Way of Dane County and um, there's a lot that, that I think all of you could possibly do if you'd like to continue to learn more and give your time and um, find out you know, how we can support doubled up families in our community. So first of all, as far as um, a couple of you know, next steps and next events, our doubled up work group is working on um, programs and awareness opportunities throughout the entire year because this is an ongoing problem as you've learned and there, we're really just starting to, I think, tackle this problem and try to make a difference. One thing that's in the works right now, um, we're hoping you'll all consider, is joining us again in June, the week of June 12th. We have not finalized the date, but we are inviting uh, Diane to come back and join us for a book discussion. As mentioned at the start of the program, she um, is an author of several books, and her most recent book, um, Dismazed and Driven, um, is available for sale, and our Madison Public Library was kind enough to um, purchase copies, so you can actually take them out of the library if you're interested, so you can look into that. And the idea is to have a book discussion. So we encourage you all to get a hold of Diane's book, which talks about this issue in much more depth and detail, and join us again in June for a book discussion. Um, we'll be sure to send more information out to everybody who would like to know more. In addition, we are working on a program that we're tentatively planning for the month of November in which we'll offer a uh, poverty simulation in our community. Some of you may be familiar, some of you may have already participated in something like this, but for those of you who have not, um, it's a very meaningful, powerful way to get a sense of what it feels like for a few hours um, to live in poverty, to struggle, um, to not know, you know, if you have a roof over your head or where you're going to find food and, and all of the different um, 
struggles that come with being homeless and, and living in poverty. So again, we hope to get more information out about that poverty simulation um, once we have it all uh, figured out and that you'll consider joining us and, and um, participating in that. Of course, that's something that we need to do um, in a safe environment once we're beyond the pandemic. So we're pushing it off to later this year. Um, so how you may be wondering how else you can get involved. I mean, step one, you're here, you're clearly interested, you wanna learn more, you're asking wonderful questions, you're taking it in. There are ways that you can help Dane County and you can help double up um, families um, and, and homeless families across the board. Um, as a staff member at United Way of Dane County, I wanted to let you know that you can kind of help our doubled up work group through uh, getting involved with United Way of Dane County. Our organization serves as a very critical connector. Um, we're certainly not the only nonprofit that's working to serve doubled up families and ultimately end homelessness, but we have the opportunity every day to, to bring together and to support the work that all these organizations are doing. Um, so in this role, United Way's role as a community convener and a catalyst, we provide opportunities to get involved. You can get involved by giving or donating, as many of you know. You can get involved by volunteering your time. And you can get involved through advocating, which is something that I'm really um, grateful to Diane for kind of reminding us at the end there. Um, you can advocate for changes in our community that can really make us a stronger and a more equitable community. Um, this year is an especially wonderful year to get involved with United Way of Dane County because it's actually our centennial year. 2022 marks 100 years of the organization um, really serving in our community. And there are a lot of extra activities planned for 2022. So on behalf of our Doubled Up Work Group, the way that you can help is to get involved through United Way. And the best way to do that, if you're not familiar, is to go to our website, which is unitedwaydanecounty.org. And on there, you'll find lots of information about the work that we're doing. You'll find um, places where you can click on a link and you can donate. And you can also um, find a link called Volunteer Your Time. It's volunteeryourtime.org, where you'll find a whole menu of volunteer opportunities that are out there in the community. Many of them now are virtual. So we hope that you will consider um, any of those next steps and ways that you can um, contribute to the work that we're doing, uh, ways that you can learn more and you can support the work that we're doing and um, continue to be an involved, invested part of the community. That is all for now. I just wanted to really end by thanking Madison Public Library once again for their incredible involvement and support. This is a new event for us. So we've never partnered with the library before and it's been an absolute uh, joy and privilege. We hope to do more of these events in the future. Is anyone gonna say an official farewell or I can? Well, I wanna add just a couple things, sure. Nicole. Um, so everybody who registered this evening will be receiving a follow-up email with some additional information. Um, we know there was a little bit of technical issues today. We apologize for that. We do hope you'll take the opportunity to review the YouTube on your own. It's powerful, it's heart-wrenching um, to see the face, faces of the parents. Um, please do take the opportunity to go on the YouTube link when you have an opportunity. But um, we will be sending a follow-up email to everybody who registered that will also include a link to sign up for a Google group. You will not automatically be signed up, but hopefully you will opt in, opt in to it. Um, it won't be a discussion forum as much. We'll use it as a notification forum so we can tell you when there's those advocacy opportunities. We can tell you when there's educational opportunities. We can share out more data. So we really hope to use this event to capture some of this energy, capture people who wanna be part of a solution in our community and really start changing the way that we look at this. Um, we can advocate with our elected officials to really look to address this issue. So we really hope that this can just sort of be the first seed in a really broader movement um, to find ways to help serve our neighbors and community members who just aren't fitting the definition as they stand now. Um, so I just wanted to throw that in as a pitch to join and let folks know that this is really only the beginning of the discussion. Um, so we're hopeful you'll stay with us as we learn and move forward in this process. And with that, I guess, um, if there's, do we have any more questions that are coming through in the chat? 
There's a last comment, um, Middleton Outreach Ministry has a program for helping folks who were doubled up, um, connection housing programs. So there's a lot of new programs that are popping up and we're really hoping to create this network to join these programs together. Um, so we really can map out where the services are in our community and where the gaps are, um, which is really the goal of what we're looking to do. So um, this will be recorded, um, available to be viewed on the library's YouTube page. And really just want to thank everybody for taking 55 minutes out of their night. Um, thanks, Senator Agard, for opening for us. Thank you, Javana, for sharing your story. Um, big, huge thanks to Diane, and most importantly, for the families who are willing to share such personal, personal things um, through the course of your video. So, again, check out uh, the links, and have a great night, everyone.